911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. You just reconfirmed, as you do every day, a reason why I love you so much. (laughs) The reason why is because I just showed you the video that I'm sure as you listen to this, you have probably seen already where a deputy unloads his entire clip after an acorn falls and hits him on the head. Now, I have a take on this that is 100% different than every other comment that I have seen posted underneath this video. I will link it in the show notes. The reason that my take on this is completely different is exactly the same as yours, Clint. And all you said just now, I showed you the video and I said, okay, do you understand? And then we're, we're going to press play. And you said, I feel so sad for him. That made my heart so happy because I too took that video in the same exact way. Now, the rhetoric, the conversation around this is that piece of shit needs to lose. Of course, he's going to lose his job. And like, you know, that that guy needs to be better trained. And what a terrible thing he shot. There was a suspect sitting in the back of that unit. And my take on that is what a shame that our officers are on such high edge all of the time that in his mind, he 1000% genuinely believed that he was shot and that he was shot in the head, that that was his immediate response. Yeah, it's something, and and watching the video, it really highlights the the almost the trauma response in in association with something because no one knows the history of of that individual officer or or kind of what he's been through, but to be on such a guard and and already be amped up to that level to where you get hit on top of the head with an acorn and then to completely. I mean, lose it in, in that instance. It's it's sad because you you're going to. I think over time we're going to see stuff like that happen more and more because you know there's we can say there he's a he we could call him all the names in the book and and say that he was like it, in hindsight it's always twenty twenty right but in that instant in that point he believed he was truly shot and to completely unload. I've seen tons of videos where suspects are sitting in the back of patrol cars, were able to pull out a gun and start shooting officers that they're driving them or approaching the vehicle. And like, that's why we're, we are so stringent on searching our suspects before we even put them in our cars, but stuff slips through the cracks. You miss things. And it, it probably was a good force. Yeah, we think of, oh, it's just a little acorn hanging on top of the head. But his mindset could have been, he could have just arrested this guy for killing his family or what. There's so many extenuating circumstances that could have led him to believe that. And, and I don't know what those extenuating circumstances were at that time. But who are we to judge this officer in hindsight? just based off of one video too. Yeah. So just for the sake of comparison, if that had not been the immediate response, and it was such a genuine response, I can't reiterate that enough, right? From the start to the end of that video, that man 1000% thought he was shot in the head. So let's, let's take a, let's kind of break this down a little bit. Let's pretend that that was not his response. What would have been a, a, a typical response? And this isn't, this isn't trying to re-critique what he should have done. I'm just, I'm just saying in another response, somebody who, who, um, perhaps thought that they were or possibly could have been shot in the head, who didn't have that type of heightened response, what would have been, uh, the, the appropriate reaction or the more common reaction that somebody would have taken? Like, so just so, so something I, hits you on the head. Something hits on the head. I would look around, see my surroundings, see what kind of just happened, and then kind of deduct that it wasn't anything correlated to the suspect that I had in my car, or it could have been someone down the street that threw a baseball at his head, or someone trying to lynch this person from your backseat. Like there's so many variables in which you would have to be able to quickly 
analyze and understand before making those decisions. And you don't have the time, especially if someone, if you believe someone just shot at you. And, and so in that instance, what, without reading the context of the narrative that they had put into the video where it says an acorn fell on his head and hit him on the head, I, I would have just strictly thought like, cause I didn't see any glass breaking on the windows to his patrol car. Uh, someone from an outside avenue was shooting at him or something could have triggered him to, to me, this is some, this is a failure by the department for not providing services for people who are in these type of situations to where they have this traumatic response in responding to something like that. Yeah, and I'm also thinking I would love to know what the um, the experience of that officer is, right? The backstory, the the types of calls that he has been in in the past, and I would want I the only thing I, I would want is to make sure that he is okay and that he's getting the services and the treatment that he needs because I can't imagine being an individual going to work, doing your job, having that level of a response for for everything that took place. And now on top of that, losing your job, going through the, the commentary of everybody that has something to say about his response and what took place, you know, the, the individual that he, he shot. Um, there was a female officer. She also discharged on, on that suspect thinking, you know, full well that my, my partner has just been shot. There, there are so many layers to this and, more than anything, I have a, a high level of just sympathy and empathy and um, just love in wanting support for this officer. You know, and and I, and I didn't know that uh, his partner had fired rounds either. But to me, in that instance now, that turns into a whole other dynamic of training. That That's a huge lack of training for that other officer as well in being able to address a threat like that. You can't just fire blindly into something that you have no clue about, but there's, and and that's that sympathetic fire that we all work so hard not to have. And, and that's something that it just makes me so sad for that officer to even had have to experience in that in for his life and his livelihood. And it, like, he's going to lose so much if, just based off of that video one one split second decision one acorn falling from a tree will change the path of his life forever and that's sad it it is really sad because it ultimately comes down to not being able to identify a threat however i truly believe that he believed that the threat was sitting in the back of that patrol unit oh yeah no absolutely and and that has led that led him to that instance and and that's in his mindset at that time and you know that's where there are laws in place to where it's all based off of of mindset and do i think he'll be criminally charged probably not but from the the law enforcement perspective is they would not see him as fit for duty to even ever work there again. Yeah, and the truth is that perhaps he wasn't fit for duty in in that moment. And and that's the whole point of this episode, that there was obviously something going on, perhaps ongoing, perhaps recent, perhaps not. Trauma has a funny way of showing up whenever it decides to. And I'm really curious to know why that reaction was the reaction that took place. And even furthermore... You know, there, there are so many pieces to this puzzle because we have the poor family of the suspect. We have now the female officer. We have him. We have his family. And I, I wish that I would see more backing from his community. This is the type of complaint that I have with that thin blue line suddenly disappearing when things like this happen. Because I haven't seen compassion being poured over this, this man. I haven't seen anybody seeing it from this angle. And it, it does. It makes me feel very bad and um, a, a bit embarrassed, actually, by the law enforcement community to not have pointed out this thing. And I'm not saying what he did was, was right. Of course, it shouldn't have happened. 
However, I think this should be the main topic of conversation, not what a dirtbag this guy is, because that's not it at all. That's You have it wrong if that's how you're thinking about this situation. Yeah, it, we've seen those instances of bad players who are cops who make those very poor decisions, and they're not doing it out of a, in, a instinct or anything. They're doing it just because... They're, there's a, they're the ones who make us all look bad as law enforcement. In this instance, it's far from that. He, he, he truly believed like, like I felt for him watching that video because he truly believed that happened. And there's so many outlying sources that could have caused that. And, and it makes me so sad for him because it was a failure on him. But I think as a whole, that was a failure of law enforcement and his training altogether. Yeah, I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode and are able to see things in a little bit of a different perspective. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.